Welcome to Let's See a Movie. This show is dedicated to the car ride to and from the movie theater, the anticipation of stories that are about to be told, and the reactions immediately thereafter. Of course, we aren't exactly movie critics, but we are people that genuinely love movies. So I guess what you're about to experience is raw, uncut, unscripted reactions. And yeah, there's going to be spoilers. So buckle up, grab some popcorn, and let's see a movie. What's up, guys? I was supposed to say something. Uh, hi. <laughs> we're going to be. Well, we're, we're, we've taken a little bit of a break because we have moved. And we kind of just stopped seeing movies because we're kind of caught up in all that. But. And a lot farther away. Yes. And also, I wanted to get us little something to help make this all sound better which if you're watching the videos would see and if you're listening to the audio you are going to hear because we are actually miked instead of just having a mic sitting in the middle of the car so today we're going to be seeing Isle of Dogs did you forget again by Wes Anderson 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 Um, Sarah, are you prepared to tell us what this? I'm trying about? to, but the Wi-Fi was messing up. <laughs> what we've done is we've moved away from all of the cell phone towers, uh, and we are just like in the middle. In of a dead now. zone, we're, yeah. We're like the one dead zone in the entire area. Let's see, we got what's well, not a summary or something. Okay, well, we got a very short one, so we'll just go with that. <clears throat> Set in Japan, Isle of Dogs follows a boy's odyssey in search of his lost dog. That's literally the... That's, that's just it. That's it. I only see the... I mean, the, yeah, no, this is... This, that's it. That's what we got for the summary. <laughs> but that's basically all you need. Um, yeah. Dog... I think they call it dog flu. Takes over. They ban all the dogs to Trash Island. Little boy flies plane to island, crashes, and now is searching for his dog. And so five other dogs help him find him. Yes. Uh, who all is in this one? Oh, I mean, like, man. It's, who it's is Wes it? Ander- yeah, it's <laughs> Wes Anderson. So this is a, an all-star cast. Yeah. Well, the best part was I found out recently that um, to get a role, like if you wanted to be part of the movie, um, that all you had to do was... Um, Donate ten dollars or more to the Film Foundation, a nonprofit uh, founded by Martin Scorsese, which specializes in the preservation and restoration of film around the world. So that was the whole thing: is like they donated to that. They got to be, um, uh, they got to be in the movie basically. So that's why there's, there's like just amazing, like everybody's in it basically. Yeah. Um, but yeah, some of the let's see, some of the greats, or at least you know. Some of the ones you would recognize in Wes Anderson movies. Edward Norton, Bob Balaban, Bill Murray, Jeff Goldblum. Let's see, uh, Francis McDormand, uh, Harvey Keitel, which I think Tilda Swinton. Like, all the ones that are, like, always in his movies. Yeah. Um, and then we got Brian Cranston. There's uh, Greta Gerwig, Scarlett Johansson, um, Yoko Ono's in it. What? Yeah, uh, Ken Wannabe, uh, where's uh, Leave Schreiber, and so there's just, oh, Angelica Houston's in it, which is a, you know, yep. Wes Anderson alum. Uh, so yeah, that's like all the, like the ones that are recognizable and everything. But they do have a decent amount of, I believe, Japanese uh, voice actors as well. I mean, since it takes place in Japan, yeah. I would imagine, yes. I mean, I don't know if they're, oh, it doesn't really say if this guy, if it's just all Asian or if they are actually from Japan itself. Mm-hmm. And we are not about to figure out based on names. Yeah, no, I wasn't <laughs> even trying to, I don't want to butcher them. 
I'd yeah. like to know how to say them before I try to say them. Um, well, the little boy that plays uh, the main uh, Atari, the little boy, he is um, from Vancouver, but is Scottish Canadian father and a Japanese mother. So there. Uh, okay, and that and he's Vancouver as in uh, British Columbia. Yes. Because like that's one of the things about like the West Coast is a lot of uh, Asian people had migrated from uh, to like the west coast of America so I mean it makes sense like yeah. there's a lot of people that are very still like in their traditions and stuff like that yeah. out in that way yeah and it's probably a little less likely to try to squish it down yeah <laughs> um um I hate this light. I'm trying to think. <laughs> well, we're both very big fans of Wes Anderson movies. Yes. Um, my favorite is The Life Aquatic with Steve Zizou. Yes. Which one's your favorite? Yes. Same one? <laughs> no, I, I enjoyed... Um, I can't like say that I like one specifically. I've seen Life Aquatic more. Like, that's just the only differentiating thing between all of them really for me Mm. yeah it's for me it's the life aquatic and then close second they kind of go neck and neck that i can't pick a favorite is moonrise kingdom and fantastic mr fox yeah so that's why i'm really excited about this one because fantastic mr fox was fantastic yeah and you know so so few words and i you know even though he does have a history of being kind of cruel to dogs in his movies, I am still very excited about a movie with all dogs, basically. Yes. Because, you know, yay. Dog <laughs> movies are the best. <laughs> so, yeah. This yeah. was, there. basically, there was just everything perfect about this movie. It's a Wes Anderson movie. It was one of his stop motion movies, and it was dogs. Yes. And then the cast just made it more perfect, because, you know, Bill Murray, oh, just everything he's in is great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Jeff Goldblum. Can't go wrong there. Nope. And Brian Cranston, I love. Like, I haven't never seen Breaking Bad. I just never got into that. Yeah. But, you know, I, I can, you know, everything I see him in, he's just so good. He, I will say, I mean, like, again, like, Breaking Bad wasn't necessarily my thing. I didn't really, I, I watched two to three seasons. I think I watched the first two seasons. And it's just like, it didn't thrill me. But I can identify that Brian Cranston was, is a good actor. Like, yeah. He, portrayed his character very well it's you know just it's my fault for not finding the storyline interesting but um no it's 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 gonna be very interesting to see him in this movie or hear him rather him. in this movie uh, that's and i i am looking forward to seeing a lot of similarities between um fantastic mr fox and uh, Isle of Dogs. Yeah, I'm all bit they do the cuss thing that they do yeah. from Fantastic Mr. Fox. So that's my favorite thing. Or something similar. Yeah. Like I just I thought that was just a funny little twist to it. Though this one is PG-13, whereas uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox, I believe, was PG. Okay. So that does make it a little bit different. So it's a little bit. A little bit. It'll just change some of the verbiage. Just yeah. Just a little bit. Well, I know they do, you know, in talking of a female dog, they do use the term bitch, which is the accurate term for yeah. it. But yeah, like, so that's probably, you know. That's probably why it's peaches. Peaches for Jardine, yeah. It's strictly that. Yeah, probably. Because it's like, with, when you, when you have a, an animated film or just anything that's been animated, instantly it gets judge to be oh well it's a kids movie yeah so hence why we had problems with people coming to sausage party with their child yeah and um and in that same regard like that's why i I feel like that's why he had made um fantastic mr fox but that's why they said cuss instead of actually actually cussing cursing and stuff (laughs) because he's like the kids are going to be watching this like yeah Let's try to circumvent the, the cussing system. Yeah. I can't find the thing that uh, says what it's why it, what it's rated for. Anyway. 
Also, I imagine because of violence, because, I mean... That, yeah, the, there's a clip that's already online of the dogs fighting, and one yeah. of them bites the other one's ear off. Yeah. I was not expecting that. And I was like, okay, so this is not PG. And that's, I think, when I found out it was PG-13. Yeah. I was like, that's a... But, I mean, I guess... Well, they don't show it. They shoot off uh, Fox's, Mr. Fox's tail yeah. in Fantastic Mr. Fox, but they don't ever show that. Yeah, they don't. They, they don't add much to it. Like they don't like. There's no blood. Or yeah. Like that. True. Uh, why can't I find? Hmm. Well, it could just be I'm on you know that IMDb app as opposed to the website. It's always worse. <sighs> this is, we have a longer drive. Yeah, we do have it, a longer drive. It's making it harder to yeah. f- find things to to talk about. Um, so I. I think we can probably cut it now, and we will see you guys after the movie. Sounds good. I wish somebody spoke his language. So it's after the movie, and it's a lot after the movie, and normally we, and if you haven't seen the show before, normally we talk about it on the ride home. Unfortunately, we live in Florida, and it's the rainy season, and it's not exactly safe. It's always the rainy season. Well, it's always the rainy season, but it's, it's not exactly the safest thing to do to record a podcast while you're driving, while it's raining. It's just, it's good to focus on your driving at that time. So we didn't do that. Um, So we're back home and we are going to talk about it now. We've actually, we've actually been saving it up, basically. Yeah, but now I feel like there's stuff I forgot. So I was trying, I was reading the synopsis or the summary of it to try to see if that jogged my memory about anything I wanted to like specifically talk about. Yeah. But I don't know now. I think the, one of the things we were about to bring up was it would have been so cool to see or to to be able to know what the people were actually saying because we don't know Japanese. But that's why I was going to say I like that, that they did that. Because like for a lot of it, if there wasn't a person there actually translating, you just mm-hmm. had the Japanese. There's no subtitles. And I thought yeah. that was really cool because you kind of just had to go based on emotion, like what was happening in the scene. Yeah. But I would, you know, now I want to know, like, because there's a lot of it was Atari talking to the dogs. And I was like, that's what I want to know is what he said to Spots, like the first time they met. Yeah. Like, um, and what he said to them, like, later, like when it was Spots and Chief and him. Yeah. So yeah, like that's basically all. Like now, like I don't really, the rest of it, whatever. I just want to know what he was saying to them because those were like really emotional scenes. So like. Yeah. And it would be nice to know, like I said, it would be nice to know what they said during the non-translated times. Yeah. But again, I agree. Like the the idea that we don't know, it kind of puts us into a dog's perspective because a dog doesn't know what we're saying. Yeah. Ever. Mostly. (laughs) So like. We have We have our dog. It's walking around us like, what are you guys doing? What, what, oh, there's both of gonna, them. Just going to sit there at our feet now. Okay. Can we get your opinion, Flynn? What did you think of the movie? He wags his tail. He, 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 he approves. He likes that there's dogs in it. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't go with us, but he just knows. <laughs> you know, his dog's good. Yep, yeah. his wag tail. Uh, but yeah, like, because dogs don't, typically don't know what humans are saying or anything like that. So it's good to have that kind of perspective of, you know, like the human, like the humans are talking gibberish to most people, well, people that don't speak that language. Yeah. So it's just like, well, like, and I, and I, I would, I would assume that was partially, I mean, I'm sure there's bigger reasons as to why he made it Japanese rather than any other. It was, language. yeah, it was inspired by uh, a certain type of. Japanese films. I read that. Okay. Well, I mean, like, but still, like, a lot of the people that are going to be seeing this film are most likely American or English speaking. So I would imagine that those people aren't going to know what is what they're saying yeah. outside of what the translators are saying. 
So I think and that kind of adds that element of just trying to figure out what they're saying and stuff like that, because like I, like a dog does. Yeah. So they did you say something. They're just that did create a bit of a plot hole with the whole thing about like he didn't understand the dogs, the dogs didn't understand him. How did they all understand the owl at the end? Because they made this plan and Atari yeah. knew exactly what was going on, and so did the dogs. So it's <laughs> like, how did everybody understand the owl? <laughs> That was the only, like, I mean, yeah. sure there's other plot holes, but that was the one that really was just like, eh. Well, I understand that the the dogs understood the owl because that's usually the case. Yeah, it's like but animals like. Animals all understand animals. It's like he knew immediately, like, once they decide they're all going to go to uh, Megasaki. I think it was Megasaki, right? Yeah. Um, Like, yeah, he's just like, all right, we're building a boat. It's yeah. like, how did you know what was going on? <laughs> Like, somehow it got across to all of them, but whatever. That's, yeah. you know, that's one little thing, but it was still... It was, unless, like, the, unless, like, the earpiece thing translated... Maybe. Um, spots. Maybe. Because, yeah, that maybe that's why he they could start communicating that way. Huh. Yeah. Okay, and there, I didn't think about that. That could be product, part of it. Because, mm. like, spots seem to completely understand what Atari was saying. Yeah, and vice versa, I guess, too. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, yeah, that, might, that would make sense. They didn't really, like, go into detail as to, like, what that was. Yeah, like, why a dog was the bodyguard of this like, kid. Other than, like, it's, like, it's just a communications device, but that could also yeah. mean a translator. Yeah. So, and this is in the future, right? So. Yeah. Which, that is funny, because they just say it's 20 years in the future, so no matter when you watch it, it's always it's, just 20 years in the yeah. future. It's, it's never not like now. like Blade Runner, where, yeah, it's, like... <laughs> This yeah, is 2049. But no, I think no, no, the first little, one is like 20. Blade Runner's like now. It's uh, I think it's 2019. Yeah. Because like yeah, then the next one's like 30 years in the future. <laughs> so we have one year until. Yeah, Republicans. I think that's when it was set. So yeah, like but you know at least they didn't give it a date, which yeah. is good. And so yeah, it's always just gonna be. It's always just 20 years in the future. Yeah. <laughs> always. That was that 20 dog years. Nah. <laughs> Uh, I did, I did, it was such a good movie, but it was, it was very sad. Very sad. Oh very my goodness. Very sad. Um, like, <sighs> like you were saying, like, what happened to sport? Like, yeah. I want to know, I want, I feel so bad for him. Like, yeah, because I mean, they, they get him out of the cave. Yeah, and like, uh, they said, like, if that, if that's who they were talking about, and they said, like, oh, he was a really nice guy, he was really friendly, everybody liked him unfortunately so that means like he still had company for a while but it just still yeah. was so sad that nobody was able to figure out how to open his cage and so he just you yeah. know died in the cage it's like oh that's heartbreaking and it's too bad that the the, the cannibal dogs didn't come get him also. yeah and yeah like that was sad too those dogs like how they have this terrible like rumor about them and yeah. really it was all just like we, we did it we to survive, to and he was already, you know, like we did it to put him out of out of his misery. Yeah. And how oh. heartbreaking when they started howling, I was like, I'm gonna start crying. Yeah. And then just the fact that they were animal tested, you know, animal yeah. testing dogs, killed yes. me because they all had like things messed up with them. Just like, oh, that's why I refuse to ever watch uh, Watership Down or the Plague Dogs because oh, those are both yeah. about about animal testing, and it's just like no, yeah. Like that's I, the rats and them used to make me physically ill when I when I, as much as I loved oh, yeah. like that book and that movie, I oh no, I could yeah. not stand that part because it just made me so physically ill. Yeah, it's like it's heartbreaking. So yeah, just animal the testing's bad. It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is important enough to. I don't need makeup that badly. Yeah, nobody needs makeup that bad. I mean, that's what. Or shampoo. You know, or, or yeah. So I, anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wet and Wild, not a sponsor, but I know they are, they don't animal. There's no animal <laughs> testing with theirs, so that's what yeah. I buy now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And let's see what else was there. Um. It was you know it had some really funny like mainly it was just like this. Uh, not abnormal. What is it? Like just like really silly stuff. Like the uh, what is it when it, during his speech? Like the uh, fear has been mongering and the brains have been washed. Yeah. Like some yeah. stuff was just so goofy. Fear has been mongered. Fear yeah. has been mongered. Yeah, and the brains have been washed. Yeah, the like the wheels have been greased. <laughs> and it's just, uh, like 
uh, what is that? I can't think of the word that I'm looking for on how to describe it. But I mean, that's kind of like with all Wes Anderson movies. Like, like I, when I explain them to people, I always say like, there's not usually anything super like sci-fi, fantasy, kind of supernatural kind of stuff. But they're always no. just slightly off of realistic because they have this fairy tale storybook feel to them. Yeah. Right, they, it, it's. The best way that I can figure to describe them is they're modern day fairy tales. Yeah, that's usually good. That's why. Like, so they're very they take quirky. Place kind of now, or in this case, the future. <laughs> yeah. But like, it's it's something that could happen, but probably is impossible. Yeah. So like that, it it fits in that idea of you know like a fairy tale. Yeah. Know? So I'd say that's why I say modern day fairy tale. Yeah. And it's all just very quirky kind of stuff and yeah. like the humor was very quirky I guess would it's still not the word I'm looking for but yeah. I'll figure it out later once we've turned this off. Yeah. I'll be like, "Oh, that's it." <laughs> Cuz yeah, like I'm trying to think of other parts where it was just like that where it was just sort of like startled you laugh because it was like, or the haikus. The haikus. <laughs> because cause he's a 12 year old boy. So like the first two are perfect. And then it's just like, I just need five more. Crap. Uh, 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 frosted <laughs> window paint. <laughs> yeah, that works. <laughs> I mean like it, 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 it's, it's five syllables, but it does not have anything yeah. to do with anything else. But and that's what that uh, like that's when funny. I was in like you know, when I was that? twelve years old writing haikus like because we for some reason had yeah to had to in, in school all the time like that's it would be exactly that oh, they don't have it I was hoping I could find the uh, one of his haikus <laughs> as if we're good yeah uh, I'm trying to think I mean uh I think I. Like, uh, Brian Cranston was amazing. Like, his character. Yeah, very... The one that actually surprised me, I never really thought of him as a voice actor, is Lee Schreiber, who is um, uh, in X Men Origins Wolverine. He plays Sabretooth, who, okay. as much as that movie was terrible, his Sabretooth was so good. Mm -hmm. Like, I just wanted a movie of him. Like, him and Wolverine would have been good, too, but he was so charismatic. You know, he's the bad guy. You know, you're not supposed to like him, but yeah. kind of love him. But I don't ever really, you know, he's not really in a lot of stuff. Like, he's got a, he's on a TV series, but I'm not really sure. I can't remember what it's called. Just, like, him doing a voice was, like, strange to me. So, hearing it, it was, it was like, oh, wow. No, yeah. He did a really, which, really good job. Which one was he? He was Spots. Oh, okay. Okay. See, that, that's one of the things that I, I kind of liked about it. Because, like, I'm terrible with actors. Yeah. Especially, like, names and what they've been in and things like that. It's usually like, you know that guy from the thing with the, <laughs> the jumping or whatever? And, <laughs> and um, but it, it was, it was nice to kind of just get lost in the plot of it mm -hmm. because it's so easy to get wrapped up in like, oh, this is like, these people are in this movie. You know, like I, I remember when, uh, seeing Thor Ragnarok, like it was just like being pumped to see Jeff Goldblum in the, in <laughs> the movie. Like he's not normally doing this sort of thing. This is gonna be awesome, and like spend like half the time in his first scene going, "Oh my God, this is so Jeff Goldblum! Like <laughs> yeah. this is amazing." He, did they have to write a script for him? Probably not. <laughs> they, I mean, they probably didn't have to, but like. Being able to just forget about that for a moment, although except for one part where um, boss says, "Oh crap!" Some uh, oh wait, and it seems like he's got a couple screws loose. Screws loose, yep. <laughs> and I was like, Bill Murray in every Wes Anderson film, he has to be the guy that points out that screws are loose. <laughs> Whether they are or not is another thing. And nine times out of ten, he's the one that's got the screw loose. But he always is that <laughs> guy. Precise. That's the only time that I thought, like, I made a mental connection to the the dog and the actor voicing the dog. Yeah, though sorry, it's Bill Murray more than anything else because it's the when the explosion he goes, "Wow!" I yeah. guess I love that because I just picture Bill Murray perfectly. But yeah. I loved. I thought, oh my gosh, the dogs were so cute, and I loved all their little quirks. Yes, like uh, you know. Um, Rex, and which is, I think was that was Edward Norton's character, mm -hmm. being very bossy, but then Chief always fighting it, like, no, yeah. if we take a vote, 
<laughs> fine, we'll take a vote. And then I loved uh, um, Jeff Goldblum's characters. Oh, have you heard the rumor? Have you heard the rumor? <laughs> and they finally call him on it. Like, where are you hearing these rumors? I love That's that. my favorite part because it's almost like the um, in Princess Bride, the inconceivable thing. Yeah. Like, I don't think that word means what you think it means. <laughs> like, finally, like something you do all the time. We got to talk about it. Yeah. And even in uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox, where his little the little whistle click thing, when um when uh Kylie finally is like, what is that? Yeah. Like I love that when you finally are just like, okay, we're done. What is? What are you doing? Why is this always a thing for you? It's just my thing. Yeah. So I found the haikus. I figured we could probably we maybe end on those. I sure. don't know. I don't. Sure. But I don't know if we're done yet. So. Um. Uh, well, we can be. Yeah. No, we've been at it for about fifteen minutes now. Okay. All right. So the first one that started out was, I turn my back on mankind. And you were right. It's, or so you were right actually about the line. So I'll say it again, though. I turn my back on mankind. Frost on window pane. <laughs> and then the best one, because I do like this line a lot, because it, like, you know, it's a huge dog lover. The f amount of hatred for the dogs in this movie upset me so much. Okay. The fact that people could turn their backs on them so much, it was just like, Meh, stop it. They're good dogs. They're good dogs, Brent. They're all good Brent. Dogs. Brent. Brent. I don't remember what it is. Um, and then the last one was, <clears throat> whatever happened to man's best friend? Cherry blossoms fall. <laughs> <laughs> that was very good. Yeah. They're good hikes. Now, good uh, hikes. rating the movie. We've never decided on how we're rating Oh, yeah, no. Um, oh, it's popcorn size. Oh, yeah. So... It's going to be a difficult one because it's a, what it, like I said, Wes Anderson movies are always, you love them or you kind of hate yeah. them. You either think they're boring or you just love the beauty and the nostalgia and like just the, the little intricacies of it. Yeah. So we loved them. We love Wes Anderson movies. Like they're just always going to be, he's one of my favorite directors. Yeah. Like there's just something about how he does movies. Yes. So I would give it a large popcorn. Yeah, I'll, I'm willing. I'm willing to give it a. I, well, let's let's go for a large. Yeah. Large. Yeah. Though I will. Because like I, I would say that I'm not gonna rush out and see this again, simply because it is sad. Yeah. Like so I don't. I don't. I don't say we'll probably buy it once it comes out on DVD. Yeah, we're definitely, definitely going to buy. We're this. getting the poster because we're you getting know, the poster. Movie theater uh, worker. I was gonna say I couldn't <laughs> think of the word I was gonna say. Movie theater perks, you know. Yeah. Manager um, perks. And I put think, it next to our Moonrise Kingdom poster. Yes. It, it, it's it's definitely. I mean, like it's not gonna not get seen again. Yeah. Like it's just it, like I said, it's not one of those ones like it, it that I'm gonna rush out and see again. Like, I, no. I mean, like I only like to so overwatch happier movies, <laughs> I guess. Although, like, Wes Anderson films aren't, like, necessarily the happy. Yeah, they tend to be but a balance one, of... This one's actually a tearjerker. Yeah, this one does have a lot more. Like, you know, he tends to have a balance have no of... Soul. Yeah, of happy with sad. But this one does tend to be a little bit more on the sad side. Because it's yeah. a very... Pretty deep, sad kind of topic. Yeah. And everything. And, like, you know, it's something a lot of people, I think, can relate to. Because, you know, people love dogs, you know? Oh, yeah. Man's best friend. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I would not say don't bring little kids to it. It's definitely for older children if you think yes. they're mature enough and everything. Because, yeah, it's it's it, PG-13. It so does it's, get a little, I mean, it, it gets a little violent. It gets violent. It gets, it's dark sometimes. Cause, I mean, yeah. there's a, the dogs that are all been tested, yeah. you know, like they've been used for animal testing. So one's got like a makeshift uh, peg leg and everything. Some of them yeah. still have like bolts in their heads. And yeah. like some, it's, one was blue. One was blue, <laughs> which was, yeah, I want them. Uh, I take all of them, all the broken dogs. And, to and me. we did call it. I, I, I think we we talked about this before that the bad word in it was bitch. Bitch, yeah. But they were using it properly. Probably, yeah, as a as female like, dog. And it was just it was used once, and it was yeah. find a bitch named Nutmeg. Yeah, <laughs> or you'll find a bitch named or you'll Nutmeg. Find a bitch named Nutmeg. Let her know. Nutmeg. You know, tell her this. You know. Like that was. I think that that was awesome. Yeah. That was um, awesome. One of the my favorite things I forgot of it is uh, Oracle. The, oh, yes. the pug. Oh, God. It's the so pug funny. that watches TV. Yeah, the I'm pug like, understands TV. Know? So that for, in their minds, she sees visions. So she just really just knows how to, what they're saying on TV. So she's like, it's going to snow tomorrow. And they're like, wow, how do you know that? <laughs> and you know? then it pans and there's the weather channel playing in the background. And so it's good. so funny. And she's so cute because she's a little pug. Yeah. 
It was Big Eyed Pug. Big Eyed Pug, yeah. Yep. And she's just like, oh, yeah, this is happening. <laughs> I love it. Um, I know there's, I mean, I don't know if we want to touch on this. I know there is some controversy because it is a lot of white actors. But I noticed, I mean, they're the dogs. The yeah. dogs are the, the white actors. Anybody who was a Japanese character, I'm pretty sure was all Japanese. So, I mean, yep. like, I understand the anger, you know, people want, want representation the, and everything. The boy was... Well, he was Japanese. Uh, oh, he and was, he's, yeah, his, his family Jap- was, he was, a, you know, he was Canadian, or no, Scottish Canadian or something and Japanese. Like, his yeah. mom was Japanese. Okay. And so, yeah, I understand, you know, representation is a big important thing. You yes. need that. But at least, you know, at least they weren't whitewashing the people, the the dogs. And that may have been a joke from the beginning because they said, like, uh, all the Japanese is, as it said, untranslated unless there is a translator there. And then they make a joke that all dog barks have been translated into English. So it's almost like it was dubbed by (laughs) the the American dub. American dub (laughs) of the dogs. So, I mean, I guess that could have been a tongue in cheek kind of thing. So, I mean,. I, like I said, I understand because I've been reading about some of the, but I mean, it's at least, you know, like I said, at least it was just the animals and yeah. everything and not everybody. It wasn't, you know, like something like that so much. Yeah. And I wonder what they do for what they're going to do for like the Japanese release of this movie. I don't know. I know like, um, it wouldn't make any sense. I know uh, I read Greta Gerwig who played the little girl, Tracy. Um, she speaks French, so she did the voice for the French version. Oh. So that's kind of cool. Though I didn't understand, I actually thought she was, like, I didn't realize she was supposed to be an American, because, like, I actually thought she was maybe, like, albino or something. Yeah. Because she had, like, the really, really curly hair and everything, like, and the, the, like, just the coloring and everything. Yeah. Like, I actually thought she was just not someone that was albino, which I thought was kind of a cool twist, but then I was like, oh, yeah. all right, she's just a, a transfer foreign exchange student. I was like, that is interesting now, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Well, it's still interesting. Yeah. Just thought that was kind of an interesting twist at first. Yeah. Because, like, the, yeah, the hair color and the skin color with the freckles and everything reminded me a lot of when you see people that are have albinoism. Yeah. Albinism? Albinism. <laughs> <laughs> Aluminum. Al- Aluminum. Al- Albatrossism. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's that's going to be it for Isle of Dogs or Isle of Dew, as our ticket Isle said. Of um, <laughs> Isle of Doge. Uh, like we said, we highly recommend this month. This this money. This movie. Um, I, 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 don't go too far. Your wire's not that long. I was going to pick him up so he could be part of. Come here. Come here. He's like no. Isle of Dog. <laughs> and um, actually, and if you're watching this on. On YouTube, oh, watch out! There we go. Okay, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see our our dog Flynn here, who's very concerned about what's going on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't worry, I got you. Um, I got you. You're safe. Yes, you're safe see, with me. Go you, see Isle of Dogs. I will never let anybody take you to an island away from me. I will go to that island with you. Yes, <laughs> that's true. It would be an adventure. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, don't forget to uh, follow us on uh, Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, wherever you follow people. We are probably Ooh, doing careful. something there. And uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, don't forget to... You're going uh, the wrong way. <laughs> to to uh, subscribe on iTunes or whatever your podcatcher is of choice. Because we release this everywhere. As, because we want people to be able to... Enjoy some oh movie information as well as we do. Because, like I say, like th- we do this because we love movies. We don't do this mm-hmm. for any other reason. Yeah. <laughs> so We're not really going to be talking about cinematography and stuff like that. No. <laughs> it's more just like, hey, this movie was fun. This movie's fun. And we liked it. We like movie. Go see movie. Go see the movie. And, uh, but yeah. No. Uh, and uh, if you enjoy it, feel free to share it with your friends. Or your family members, or somebody that just likes movies. So, and we would appreciate um, the word getting spread. So, until next time, enjoy the show. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for this episode of Let's See a Movie. We'd love to hear from you, so feel free to email us at podcast at attackofthebeards.com. 
This, of course, is a production of Attack of the Beards and Net Nothing Media. And for more information about this show and all the other shows that we do, visit us at attackofthebeards.com. See you next time.